Hi, I'm Paul Lander, and in this segment we're going to look a little bit at two of the large public works in the western United States, particularly the history of the Hoover and the Glen Canyon dams. As we've learned before, life in the West is different for a variety of reasons, but in terms of water and looking at water management, one of the distinctions is there isn't a large abundance of water distributed like we have evenly over the East Coast or some of the Pacific Northwest. So one of the needs in any arid, semi-arid area is to think about storage, and that certainly was on the minds of people in the 20th century. And ideas about building some kind of a dam, some kind of structure on the Colorado River had come up for, for decades. Um, but it wasn't really until 1905 when there was a massive flooding for the Rocky Mountains that actually uh, wiped out a lot of farmland that the initiative got a little bit more steam and people in Congress started to thinking more um, intensively. Would there be an opportunity to build a large dam or storage structure on the Colorado River and some locations had been scouted to some kind of degree. But still, discussions were going on when it appeared after World War I, there was a tremendous amount of economic activity in Southern California, and lots of the other people in the Western states were worried about Southern California really taxing the bounty of the Colorado River, if you will. This led to the passage of what is known as the Colorado River Compact in 1922. You can see in the chart here, there was an allocation to each of the seven basin states. So everybody had, in their minds in 1922, a fair share of water, and everybody knew exactly who got what. But still, at this point, there was no infrastructure for delivering that amount of uh, water on a regular basis with any kind of um, reliability. So the discussion ensued for looking at some kind of a structure on the Colorado River. Ideas were flown, um, sites were actually scouted, you can see from this drawing here, looking at some place as an opportunity on the Colorado River. After many failed attempts to get a uh, dam on the Colorado River authorized in Congress, it was really a flood event on the other side of the country in Mississippi in 1927 that brought about the sentiments from southern and eastern Congress people to think about, well, maybe there's an opportunity here and it's reasonable to think about a control structure on the Colorado River. So that followed by the failure of a dam in the Los Angeles area that led to many, many deaths finally really was the impetus for authorizing and giving money to think about creating a structure on the Colorado River. Um, again, we had the Colorado River Compact that talked about who got what, but we really needed this authorization um, embodied in the 1928 Boulder Canyon Act that authorized Congress to deliver funds, actually set up a project, and so we could think about bringing water um, to the people in a more organized and uh, controlled fashion. So this led to what we know as, as the Hoover Dam today. It was originally called the Boulder Dam for that region, but was renamed in honor of who was then Secretary of Commerce, became the 31st President of the United States, Herbert Hoover. Um, and you can see in the photo on the bottom, this was a river system like any other, deep canyons, and now has a huge controlling structure on it. You can see in the timeline that there were a lot of activity going on in the Colorado River at this point. Um, the Hoover Dam was the big one that really kind of kicked it off, completed in 1935, followed by the Glen Canyon Dam in the upper basin um, a little bit later. Interestingly, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which we'll hear about, together can hold four times the annual flow of the Colorado River. So as I tell my students, these are really, really big buckets. So they have a tremendous opportunity to provide regularity and some reliability to those in the Colorado River Basin. The sister project of the Hoover Dam was the Glen Canyon Dam, built for the interests of the upper basin states. Remembering in that allocation of the 1922 compact, who gets what, there was also a straight division between the upper and the lower divisions. But for the upper basin states to have some security, they really needed their own storage, their own control device, and that led to the building of the Glen Canyon Dam and its reservoir now known as Lake Powell. Well, the upper basin states were obligated by the 1922 compact to deliver on a regular basis to the lower basin. But again, they had no infrastructure, no controllability of that. And so they were really interested in having some kind of a structure, some storage device, if you will, that they could put their water in and have those regular deliveries to the lower basin so that they would be in accordance with the compact. That was the reason and the idea behind the Clinton Canyon Dam. You can see the site here that they looked at early on, and so that ultimately became built as the Glen Canyon Dam with Lake Powell behind it. Lake Powell is a tremendous recreational resource, as are any large water bodies in the western United States, because we really crave water. As Powell reminded us 150 years ago, water is hard to find out here, so when we find it, we like to use it any way we can. Well, at the time, uh, things were really rolling in Congress. The Bureau of Reclamation was uh, feeling quite successful having built these large infrastructure projects, and so ideas for what else could we do. 
Glen Canyon is an interesting story in that it was really the compromise. There was also a plan at, during this uh, era to build a large dam called Echo Dam on the border, uh, just west of the border between Colorado and Utah, um, we're in the area now known as Dinosaur National Park. And the Echo Canyon Dam, as we'll see pictures later, would have inundated that area, added substantially more water, but really got the ire and became the flashpoint for a large segment of the environmental movement of the 1960s, if you will. The compromise of, okay, we'll let that go, but we're gonna build Glen Canyon Dam because we need that for the Colorado River. The last big project we think of in this federal era of large project was the Central Arizona Project. Long considered within Congress and frankly by the Congress people of Arizona, the Central Arizona Project is designed to give Arizona their allotment of 2.8 million acre feet from the Colorado River Compact to bring that water from the Colorado River over to Phoenix and Tucson where all the people are. Again, our need to deliver the water from where it really is naturally to where the people are. Very common theme in the West United States. The Central Arizona Project was completed and went online about 1993 and has meant a huge economic boom and some security for Arizona in that region. So back to Echo Park again, despite that failed attempt there, was still interest in trying to build other structures. So the Echo Park Dam proposed on the Green River in Utah, you can see in the photo here on the bottom right, there's a signature rock there that where it would have been inundated. And this was, these were the kinds of images that were put out there to garner support for people to think about actually are there better places or is there a better way we might actually think about marshalling forces to control the Colorado River. And finally, you can look here again, reminding us that the large structures we have built on the Colorado River, including Lake Powell and Lake Mead, they hold together already four times the annual flow of the Colorado River, which makes the Colorado River system itself one if not the most uh, storage intensive river systems on the planet. That being said, there's a growing need for water from cities, and so I think in the urban areas, this can, conversation will continue. What more can we possibly reek out of the Colorado River? Um, and the cities, again, with the growing political clout, growing populations, and growing uh, checkbooks, are gonna be the ones driving a lot of the future discussions about where we go with water management in the Colorado River Basin.